Hello, and welcome to Mr. Dude Manzer. And today, I am going to be reading My Wife Won't Stop Screaming. Saturday night, 3am. I was in the middle of a particularly enjoyable dream when I was awoken by a tornado siren. We don't live in Tornado Alley, but we hear the sirens enough to know what they mean. Disorientated, I fumbled with the covers and rolled off the bed onto my feet. I started to move to my son's room so I could take him to the basement. Jess would be right behind me, I was sure. I took him a few seconds for my mind to get its bearings, but once it did, I realized that the sound was not a tornado siren. I turned around to see Jess sitting on top of my bed, with the moonlight illuminating her face. Her jaw was open so wide it looked at a popped out of joint, but the rest of her face was strangely serene. The sound she was making was completely inhuman, not only in tone but in volume. Also duration. I stared at her frozen, for what felt like forever, simply trying to comprehend what was happening. When I realized she hadn't stopped to take a breath, I'm not proud of what I did next. I ran away. I'm about 6'4", and my wife barely 5 feet tall, and weighs 100 pounds soaking wet. But she scared the living freak out of me, and I needed to get my son get out of there. As soon as I set foot out the door, the screaming stopped. Just was laying back down in bed, sound asleep. I woke her up, and she insisted that she doesn't remember any of it, and she wasn't having a bad dream. By some miracle, the baby was still asleep, but I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Sunday night. I went to bed early, to make up for the lost sleep the night before. Other than some stressful dreams that I can't quite remember, it was a normal night. Monday night, 4am. It wasn't the sound that woke me up this time. I don't know exactly what roused me, but I opened my eyes to see Jess leaning over me, with what seemed the same disturbing expression on her face from the other night. Her jaw stretched wide to the point of disfigurement, and then the sound came. A freaking siren wail. She screamed while looking at me. Well, not really at me. Her eyes were open, and she was only inches from my face, but it looked like she was looking through me. Same story as before. She clapped back into the sleep as soon as I made it off the bed, and insists that I'm lying about all this to freak her out. Tuesday night, 3 a.m. I came to bed late, with my phone ready to capture anything that happened. She slept like a baby all night. Wednesday night, 2 a.m. It looks like there's a pattern here. I was expecting something to happen, so I got my phone ready again, and stayed up as long as I could. But apparently I fell asleep. I was reaching back to consciousness like Jess is screaming again. This time she was standing at the foot of the bed looking at the wall in the other direction. I pulled out my phone and started recording. It was pitch black in the bedroom, but at least I went have that horrible sound on tape. After the outburst was over, Jess rehinged her jaw, crawling back into bed, closed her eyes and was immediately asleep. I woke her and showed her the video. Of course, you couldn't see a god dang thing, but the worst part was the scream that wasn't there either. At first, I thought maybe the sound had blown out the mic of the phone or something, but you could hear the bed sheets ruffling, and apparently I'd started muttering, oh crap, oh crap, while recording. Just become very annoyed at this joke that I was playing on her. The night. Midnight. I wasn't expecting this at all. It doesn't fit the pattern. So far it has been every other day, and much later at night. I was working late in my office and I heard the sound. God. It sounds like louder every freaking time I hear it. I ran to the bedroom. It just wasn't there. The sound was coming from Michael's room. I ran into my son's room to see if Jess was standing over his crib, watching him sleep. How could he freaking sleep through this? It's just not occurring to me that he hasn't woken up a single time Jess has done this. I started to walk toward Michael to get him out of the room. I sort of expect Jess to snap out of it and go back to sleep like she had the previous three times, and she didn't, but not before slowly craning her neck to the side and looking me in the eyes. The wailing continued, her head half cocked to the side and her mouth uncomfortably wide open. She wasn't looking through me like before, she was looking directly at me. The corners of her mouth pulled back slightly as she was drawing the smile. Then, suddenly as it began, 
The screaming stopped. She closed her mouth and walked silently back to the bedroom and fell asleep. So now it's 2 a.m. And I'm sitting here in my son's room with my laptop wondering if Jess would ever forgive me if I just grabbed him and drove to my parents' house in the middle of the night.